Welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here. We're working on a Shamshire scimitar. This episode is sponsored by Bespoke Post. In the last episode, you saw us get the gold into the guard. We shoved a few hundred bucks of the stuff inside of it, but it looks ugly as can be right now. So as I said at the end of the last episode, we're gonna have to take this chisel and chisel the top of the gold off and hopefully not ripping the gold out of the steel. This is so difficult. It's not looking very good. We've ripped a little bit out already. See that hole right there? That is uh, foreboding for what is to come. So as I've been chiseling away here, there's been a few moments where I've ripped up a little bit of a hole or where the lines, the seams of the wire have poked through. So what I've been doing is between chiselings, I've been giving it a little bit of a burnish here. Now this is a scribe that I use as a burnisher. It's got a point on it, but it's not very ergonomic to be putting a lot of downwards pressure on this little rod. So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna take this carbide burr that is a little bit worn out and we're going to grind it into a point, stick it in this little handle, and hopefully be able to put way more pressure down in a way that's uh, a little more comfortable. Oh, much better. Way more pressure on the tool, way more controllability, and much more comfortable. Home straight, it's always on the home straight. Look how close we were. Oh, gosh, I screwed it up bad. What I have done is I was coming in here, planing off this surface. See, I was trying to do this. Just plane off the surface a little bit. Yay, little gentle cuts. And I sent this chisel sailing deep into the abyss. So deep, we are down to the undercut depth. Mrs. Steele is gonna fix it for me. I'm gonna go play with the dogs. So as you can see, the lines are not crisply defined at all. We're gonna hopefully solve that with our next step. Having burnished, having cut, having hammered again, we're now going to use stones to bring down any of the steel that's proud and especially bring down all of the gold that's sticking above the surface. My oil is spilling through this pot. Calamity. Hey, don't judge. Shorts and Crocs, perfectly acceptable attire when you're engraving. I actually couldn't see any of that. I've ratted myself out. Ratted myself out. Dang it. What are those? Right, we're gonna take a little break to thank today's sponsor, which is the fantastic Bespoke Post. I've got three of their boxes to try out. Let me tell you a little bit about them. So, Bespoke Post, it's a monthly membership kit. You spend 45 bucks a month. Bespoke Post from small businesses all over the world sources $70 worth retail value of stuff and sends it to you. Now I know pretty much all of you guys are just like me, you're gear junkies, you love your stuff. No matter in which discipline of gear junkie stuff acquiring you happen to be in, you're gonna find great things with Bespoke Post because they got questionnaires that help make sure that they offer you the type of box that you're gonna want. This is perfect for me. A set of sharpening stones, some honing oil. Let's open up the trail kit in black. Ooh. 
Sure. What I really like about Bespoke Post is that though it's a subscription service, every single month they preview your kit for you and you have the opportunity to modify it and get a different box or you can cancel it. Last year, Bespoke Post bought $47 million worth of products from small businesses, supporting them through a global pandemic and providing their customers with awesome things. Ah, oh, this makes me happy. This is such a beautiful bag. They've got a great deal for you. You can get 20% off your first Bespoke Post box when you go to Bespoke Post and you use code STEEL20 at checkout. Please go sign up, check them out, get some cool gear for yourself. Let's get back to the video. And at last, our design has come through. And by goodness, does it look a whole lot better than I thought it would. It is pretty decent. It is not perfect though. A few little problems to point out. Right there, there is a little bit of a divot you might spot. That's from where I chiseled in too deep. And if I grind down all the material to then reveal that, there's a potential that our inlay doesn't end up with the depth that it needs to stay in securely. You'll also see there's some little shadows around the inlay in certain areas. And those shadows are where when we undercut the steel, we rippled it up. And there's a potential that we can grind through it, but I'd really like to do as little stoning as possible because the deeper we go, the less gold is actually held in there and the more chance of it coming out. But I don't think those ripples are gonna be a problem because as I am looking at this design, it seems to me that I've got to do another step to this whole thing to properly make it pop and properly make it uh, the piece that it deserves to be after everything that we've put into it. And that is engrave about a quarter of a millimeter to one side of all of the gold a very neat line. And what that'll do is it'll make it stand out. And if we then decide it needs it, it allows us to have a border for cutting out the background. Right. I've cracked this up. The border is so rough, it's awful. Now, sometimes in projects like this, you can make it substantially worse in the process of making it substantially better. What are the odds of that being the case right now? Couldn't tell you. I don't understand how anybody could be a full-time engraver. The focus that's required, the eye strain, just attention to every single part of your body to stay still enough, to move your hand perfectly, follow the contours, it's exhausting. And I'm so impressed by the fact that this is people's jobs. When I last spoke to you, I presume I was probably petrified about the fact that I had started to make it look way worse than it was originally. We've somehow come a little bit back from there and it's starting to look better. Initially, as I made those cuts on the borders, it looked really, really terrible. I then started cutting on the inside and it pulled the focus away from the uneven borders and started to make it look better. You see how that design just pops so much more that it has the outline. We're gonna continue on from there, continue making it pop some more by trying to hog away some of the background. And there's a few ways that we're gonna do it. Number one, where we can, we'll probably use the gravers, cut away the material. And number two, we'll use this bad boy right here. This is a 420,000 or something RPM, a little uh, air powered burr. And we can put a half millimeter ball burr in the end and it'll cut away. Look at that hilarious thing. See how teeny weeny that is, Jamie? I could try this out with the uh, graver as I said earlier, but I just feel like changing things up a little bit. Oh, that works amazingly. Wow, a feather touch is all it takes. Wow. 
What I want to do now is I just want to test how it's going to look at the very, very end to properly have a nice background. Just like when we made our inlay, we have to flatten it off. So let's see if using a ball burr allows us to do the whole job. Looks fairly good. I think it changes things up. We'll use the ball burr. The background is removed, and now we're gonna flatten it with a punch, and then we're gonna use a pointy punch to stipple it, which is poking into it straight up and down in such a way that it kind of captures all the light, sucks it in, and makes the background really dark. And if we want to, we can put some paint in the background, and that stippling holds the paint and creates this beautiful contrast, as we did on the Viking sword. Much the same. Now we stipple, but before, let's see how Jamie's progress has been going. You've been working on the power hammer? Yes, yeah, it's been going quite well. Um, I've done as much as I can without moving the power hammer, so we need a forklift now to swap the thing around. Um, but we've done all this base bit and the anvil today. The paint doesn't come off this as well. I think it might be a different sort of metal compared to the rest of the power hammer. Interesting. Hammer. Anyway, you know what, Jamie? That's the end of the video. Is it? Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Always a pleasure. Thank you to Bespoke Puzz for sponsoring this. To the pep!